Um, so uh, this uh, talk today is going to be uh, discussing uh, joint uh, work with uh, two PhD students at Northwestern, uh, Alec Johnson and Inkai Lee. Uh, they're both here on the panel, so they're uh, happy to answer the text questions online as we as we as we go. Uh, and uh, the paper is on archive. Um, the paper has two main thrusts, and I'm really only speaking about one of them today. Uh, so I've used a slightly different title from the archive version. So today I'm going to be talking about optimal prior independent mechanism design. Uh, cool. So uh, the, the goal of prior independent mechanism design is to understand mechanisms that are robust to uh, variation in the distribution of preferences. And um, robustness is a, a key concern of interest in economics, and uh, there are other papers in economics that look at getting at robustness. Um, I'm going to be focusing today on uh, this particular formulation of the robustness question, um, which is based on the following optimization problem. Uh, just to give you some notation, um, I'm going to be interested in a family of mechanisms, a family of distributions over the types of the agents. Um, We'll let uh, V be a, a profile of the private types of the agents uh, that actually show up in the, in the mechanism. Um, when I run the mechanism on a profile of types, then M of V will be the, say, the revenue of the, me uh, of the mechanism on that type profile. And uh, given a distribution over the private types, I can talk about the optimal mechanism in the a family of mechanisms uh, for maximizing the expected revenue. Cool. So with that notation, uh, what is this prior independent mechanism design a formulation? Um, I'm going to look at the ratio of the revenue of the optimal mechanism for a given distribution to the ratio of my mechanism. Okay. And so this is since it's the optimal mechanism, then this 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 ratio is always going to be a number bigger than one. Okay. Um, and so as the designer, I'm going to want to choose a mechanism to minimize this ratio. But I want to be minimizing this ratio in worst case over distributions. So nature is going to choose a distribution from the family distributions to make this ratio as big as possible. OK, so this is the, is the question of prior independent mechanism design. It says, what are mechanisms that uh, uh, minimize the worst case uh, multiplicative loss towards the Bayesian optimal mechanism? Uh, great. So. Um, I'm going to be focusing today on what's emerged in, in the literature as a canonical uh, environment for looking at this prior independent mechanism design question. So I'm going to consider uh, n equals two agents, a seller with a single item, and the objective of revenue maximization. The family of mechanisms I'm going to think about are truthful mechanisms, so uh, dominant strategy incentive compatible, uh, feasible meaning they don't over allocate the item. And we're going to impose an additional assumption here, which we'll talk a little bit about the end, which is scale invariance. Um, because I'm looking to optimize a ratio, I, you, know, you sort of would hope that the answer you'd get wouldn't depend on the scale of the problem. So if we multiplied all the values by 100, we should get basically the same solution. Um, unfortunately, we're unable to get rid of this as an assumption. So I'm going to put it, uh, keep it as an assumption for the talk. OK, and the family of distributions I'm going to care about are IID across the agents. So the agents are drawn IID from the same distribution. And we're going to impose the standard regularity assumption on the distribution, which I'll, I'll discuss more later. Um, so this, this, uh, this prior independent mechanism design problem of, in this scenario that I've just described, identifying the mechanism that minimizes this uh, ratio, its multiplicative approximation to the Bayesian optimal mechanism, <clears throat> in worst case over all uh, IID regular distributions, has been studied uh, pretty significantly in the literature. Um, in 2010, uh, Dagmanote, Rothgard, and Yan showed that the optimal approximation factor of this question is at most two. And in fact, the second price auction achieves uh, an approximation factor of two. Um, a really impressive paper uh, by uh, Fu, Ermelika, Lucia, and Strack, uh, and uh, Nicole presented previously uh, some other work, and Hu Fu is here at, at University of British Columbia. 
um, showed the remarkable and surprising result that uh, actually beta, the optimal value of this program is strictly less than two. And in a really great uh, uh, piece of recent work, Alua and Bezba showed that the, the optimal value of this program is somewhere between uh, 1.8 and 1.95. Cool. So what I'm going to do today is show you that we've actually solved this program for this single item auction problem with two agents and the family of regular distributions. And the prior independent auction has uh, approximation factor beta uh, about 1.9. Cool. So um, I want to tell you what that mechanism is, the mechanism that optimizes that program. And one of the things that I think is so uh, compelling about this program is it's, it's a super simple to state problem. Two agents, regular distributions. Um, what is the mechanism that's, that's, got, that's sort of the, the most uh, robust revenue guarantees? Um, the mechanism which we'll see is going to be optimal is this funny looking mechanism. OK. so. I'm going to call it the random markup mechanism. What we're going to do is draw alpha uh, at random. It'll either be 1 with probability about 0.8, or it'll be about 2.5 otherwise. And I'm essentially going to run the second price auction with a markup factor of alpha. OK, so I'm going to offer agent 1 a price of alpha times v2 and vice versa. OK, since alpha is always at least one, then only one agent will ever buy. Uh, so we satisfy our feasibility constraint. And so um, again, to make sure everyone is, is, is following here, with probability 0.8, we're running the second price auction. With probability about 0.2, we are taking the second highest bid and, multi and, uh, and marking up by a 2.5 factor about and offering the highest bidder that, uh, that marked up uh, second highest bid. And so this might not sell the item. So we might end up uh, keeping the item. Uh, but we, of course, never sell uh, more than one item because uh, we're always using a markup of at least one. Cool. And again, uh, the theorem is, is that uh, the random markup mechanism is a prior independent optimal mechanism uh, in this two-agent revenue maximization setting. Uh, and its approximation factor is uh, 1.91. Cool. So um, I'm going to briefly uh, review the connection, the the literature that this this work is sort of uh, uh, in. Um, there was in the uh, I guess the the 2000s. There was a lot of work on prior free mechanism design. Um, and as a, as a model of robustness uh, coming out of computer science. Uh, and then uh, at around 2010, there was a transition in computer science to uh, looking at this prior independent question, which is asking, oh, suppose there is a prior, but we don't know it. How well can we do? And actually, there was some early work in economics that uh, was sort of paving the way uh, for asking these prior independent questions. Um, as I said before, there are many other ways you can ask robustness questions in mechanism design. I've, I've written a couple of, I think, the salient ways uh, of doing that here. And uh, the last thing I want to mention is that if you're going to think about uh, ro you know, robustness and prior independence in mechanism design, it's good to understand what, what's happened in the implementation theory literature. And so I, I mentioned sort of a survey by, by Matt Jackson. Um, one, one, uh, so I, I said I'm going to focus on uh, uh, a significant part of the paper, which is on uh, identifying prior independent optimal mechanisms. Uh, the paper also has another uh, significant part, which is on giving a formal connection between the prior free mechanism design question and the prior independent mechanism design question. I'm going to refer you to the paper to, to see that, uh, that connection. Cool. So here's my agenda for the rest of the talk. Um, so I'm going to start with a warm-up. Uh, and, and in fact, I'm going to show you the, 
the two approximation result uh, from Danguanote et al. Uh, and this will help us uh, get uh, you know, a little review of auction theory uh, and uh, uh, also uh, see some of the, the notation that we're going to be using for the remainder of the talk. Okay, and as I said, um, this problem of identifying the prior independent OPL mechanism uh, for the two agent regular distribution uh, scenario has emerged as sort of a, a, a fundamental challenge area in the sense that um, you know, it was essentially an open question from the Danguanote et al. paper in 2010. Um, and it's one that you know, our uh, analysis tools have you know, failed to make progress on for about 10 years. And so a, a large part of the talk will be giving you a sketch of the proof where we're able to identify the optimal mechanism here and and uh, and uh, uh, analyze its approximation bound, uh, and I'll then I'll conclude. Um, cool. So we're uh, going to jump into the review, uh, and uh, and I'm going to show you this two approximation result uh, from Danguanote et al. Um, so uh, some notation that will be helpful. Uh, it'll be convenient to express the distribution of, of private types of the agents in terms of their inverse demand curve. Okay, so we'll let V of Q be the value of an agent with a quantile Q. Okay, in other words, we're going to sort the agents from uh, highest value to lowest value. So we'll sort them on the agents drawn from a distribution. Uh, we'll sort the types uh, in terms of their strength. So zero is the stronger types, one is the weaker types. And um, the V of Q is the inverse demand curve, which tells us how to map sort of the strength of the type relative to the distribution to a value. Uh, the revenue curve then uh, tells us the revenue that we get from posting a price that has a given sale probability. Okay, so uh, R of Q hat is the revenue we get from posting a price that's bought with probability Q hat. Okay, well, what price do we post uh, that gets bought with probability Q hat? Well, it's just the price that corresponds to the value that's at that quantile, okay? Um, and so uh, this defines uh, what's called the revenue curve, uh, and we can plot that. And so actually this distribution is the uniform distribution, as you can see, and the revenue curve is simply a quadratic uh, function. Um, just to understand a little bit of the geometry of revenue curves, it's useful to, to see that, okay, so if we're posting a price that's bought with probability Q hat, um, we're going to have revenue of V of Q hat, the price we post, times Q hat, the probability someone buys. And uh, the price V of Q hat can be interpreted as the slope of a line from the origin through the revenue curve at Q hat. Okay, because again, uh, Q hat times V of Q hat uh, gives you exactly the value of the revenue curve there. Okay, so prices correspond to lines from the origin. And the, the agents who uh, have revenue curve that are above the price are going to buy at that price. The rev agents with, with, uh, who, where the revenue curve is below the uh, price don't buy. Okay, and of course, you can depict uh, this revenue also back in this picture. It is Q hat times V of Q hat. It's the area of this red rectangle. Okay, so this is um, how you can think about the geometry of uh, pricing and revenue for a single agent. Okay, I want to... Uh, briefly define the regularity assumption. Uh, many of you probably are familiar with it. It's a standard assumption in auctions. So the regularity assumption is equivalent to the assumption that this revenue curve that I get here is a concave function. So, uh, um, and what regularity is going to give us is that uh, optimal mechanisms aren't going to mix because we have concavity already. Cool. So I now want to... Um, talk about the, this proof I said I would give you as, as a warm-up, which is um, the proof that the second price auction 
is a, two, a prior independent two approximation to the optimal auction in the two agent IID regular agents case. Um, and I'm going to give you a very geometric proof of this. I think this, this proof of, uh, of this result is, is, uh, is very nice and intuitive. It's, uh, again, due to Dongwanote et al. OK, so here are some um, basic properties that we have from auction theory, uh, taking the Meyerson's 81 analysis uh, uh, and reinterpreting it using uh, the Blue and Rob uh, Boulot and Roberts uh, approach. Um, and so if I have two IID regular agents and one item to sell, then the revenue of the second price auction I can write at, uh, with the following formula. It's twice the expected value of drawing a quantile uniformly from 0, 1, and evaluating the revenue curve at that quantile. Okay. In other words, let's think about one of the agent's perspectives here in the second price auction. Well. The, this agent in the second price offer, auction is offered a price equal to the value of the other agent. That value of the other agent is drawn IID from the value distribution. Okay, so drawing IID from the value distribution is equivalent to drawing uniformly from the quantile distribution. Okay, and the revenue curve, R of Q, tells us the revenue for any particular quantile that I offer the price of. And so if I draw a uniform quantile, then I'm going to get the expected value of uh, the revenue curve at that uniform quantile. Okay, and that's what one agent feels. And so if I have two agents in this two agent IID second price auction, uh, I get twice that revenue. So that would be the revenue in the second price auction. Uh, what about the optimal auction? Uh, well, the difference between the optimal auction and the second price auction is the optimal auction, as you know, for IID regular agents has a reserve price. In particular, um, we're gonna offer either the take again agent one's perspective agent one is either getting offered the uh the value of the other agent as a price or they're getting offered the reserve price as a price okay what's the reserve price well it's the quantile that maximizes it corresponds to the price at the quantile that maximizes the revenue curve okay so an equivalent way to write that is that the price that agent one faces is going to be um, the maximum over, let's draw agent two's quantile from the uniform distribution. And uh, then we're going to maximize uh, the value of the revenue curve. And we'll either take the optimum point if agent two has a, has a high quantile, meaning they have a low value, um, or we'll just offer that price and take that point. Okay. And so, of course, then we have two agents. And so the revenue is going to be twice that. Great. So um, I'm going to look at an example uh, to illustrate uh, these two uh, these two analyses. So again, um, if I have the uniform distribution, then my revenue curve is this quadratic function, uh, and so uh, the revenue of the second price auction is twice the uh, expectation over quantiles of R of Q, which is exactly twice the area underneath this curve. Cool. Uh, similarly, we can uh, look at the revenue of the optimal auction. Uh, and again, what, what I'm thinking is, is for, for, for the player is I'm drawing a uniform random quantile. I'm offering them that price. But if the quantile is too high, meaning the value is too low, I instead offer the reserve price instead, which is the point that ma maximizes this curve. OK, so the revenue I get is the area, uh, is the area underneath this curve uh, extending out to one after the maximum, because that's what this max does in the, in the formula. OK, so that is the revenue from one agent in the optimal auction. So now I can sort of geometrically compare the differences in revenue between the second price auction and the optimal auction. Uh, it's just the sort of the ratio of these two uh, areas. Cool. And so then the the uh, really uh, elegant result, um, which is you can derive it from the bulow klemperer result, um, but I like this geometric proof that I'm giving here, which is due to Dongwanote et al., um, is that if I have two agents uh, with a regular distribution and one item to sell, the second price auction is a prior independent two approximation. Meaning, um, you know, if I were to run the optimal auction, I have to know what the distribution is so I can know what the what the price I should what the reserve prices I should set. Okay, but if I 
just run the second price auction. I'm going to get less revenue. But this result says I'm not going to get that much less revenue. OK, and so let's see why that is with a geometric argument. OK, so the first thing I want to do is say that, well, if we look at the revenue I'm getting from the second price auction, I can lower bound the red area here by this inscribed triangle, the area of the inscribed triangle here. OK, and for the optimal auction, I can upper bound its revenue by the rectangle that contains the revenue curve. OK, and then by simple geometry, the area of a triangle is ha exactly half the area of a, the rectangle that contains it. OK, uh, so we see that the rectangle is at least the optimal revenue, which is uh, um, and the triangle is um, the second price auction revenue is at most the triangle, which is half of the rectangle. OK, so we see we get a two approximation. Cool. This uh, two approximation result is tight. Um, and the revenue curve that gets that shows that it is tight is this revenue curve right here. OK, and so if you were to look at this revenue curve, you note that, uh, again, assuming the, uh, the height is just normalize the height to one, then the revenue from one agent here is one half. Uh, the revenue from two agents is one for the second price auction. Uh, and the optimal auction sets a reserve price uh, to get uh, the area of the rectangle exactly. Um, and twice that would be two. And so the, uh, uh, this two approximation result is tight uh, for the second price auction. Cool. So that's my warm up. Um, I think this, this result is actually a really quite a compelling result. Um, good. So uh, up next, I'm going to go into the details of the proof of our uh, analysis of the prior independent optimization problem, where we identify the prior independent optimal mechanism. OK, and just to remind you what we're talking about, um, we're looking at uh, n equals two agents. We're looking at uh, truthful, feasible mechanisms. And we've imposed an additional scale invariant assumption, uh, which um, uh, unfortunately, we're unable to uh, relax uh, with our current techniques. Um, and we are considering sort of worst case prior independent optimization over the family of distributions uh, that are IID and regular for the two agents. Cool. And so again, that mechanism is, I call it a random markup mechanism. Uh, and essentially, it's you flip a coin with probably 0.8, and you run the second price auction. And with probably about 0.2, you're going to do a marked up version of the second price auction, where you take the where each age, each of the two agents faces a price equal to the other agent's bid, scaled up by a factor of 2.5-ish. Uh, okay, so that's the mechanism. And then the proof is that the the, the theorem statement is that this random markup mechanism is the prior independent optimal mechanism with an approximation factor of uh, 1.91. Cool. So I've just put up the prior independent optimal mechanism design framework here. It is a min-max problem of the ratio that the mechanism gets in the denominator to the uh, optimal revenue you could get if you knew the distribution and you designed the, the Bayesian optimal mechanism for it. We, of course, know what these are for uh, for two agent regular IID regular distributions. This is just the second price auction with reserve, the right reserve. Okay, and this mechanism M that I'm going to exhibit is my uh, is my um, random markup mechanism that I had on the previous slide. Okay, I'm going to view this as this min max problem as a zero sum game between the designer and nature, where nature wants to maximize this ratio and the designer wants to minimize it. Um, and so we can use properties of zero sum games uh, to be convinced that we found the optimal solution. OK, um, let me introduce a new concept. Uh, so I'm going to let f star be the distribution that corresponds to a triangular revenue curve. 
and in particular will correspond to the revenue curve where the triangle, uh, where the, the, the peak revenue is, the optimal revenue is one, and the monopoly quantile, sort of the, the, the uh, probability you'd buy if I posted the price uh, that you buy at and would pay one is a 0 0.09. Okay, that's just uh, the triangle distribution with monopoly quantile 0 0.09. Okay, um, so what I'm going to show is that if the if nature chooses to use a triangular distribution, then the the designer is is happy to use the random markup mechanism. So the random markup mechanism is the best response if the principal chooses uh, this triangular distribution, and uh, Moreover, if the designer decides to use the random markup mechanism, then the distribution F star is the best response of nature in this zero sum game where nature wants to maximize this ratio and the designer wants to minimize it. Cool. Um, so good. So I want to uh, talk a little bit more about these two steps. So I first want to talk about how the random markup mechanism is the best response of the designer to a triangular shape distribution F star. OK, so um, a triangular shape distribution, what does it mean for distribution to be triangular shape? Well, remember, prices are lines from the origin. And so that upward slope of the triangle corresponds to a point mass. OK, that point mass is the only measure of types that has positive virtual value. On the downward slope, uh, again, virtual values, for those of you who are familiar with revenue maximization, are the derivative of the revenue uh, uh, curve, so the marginal revenue. And so the upward slope is a point mass of agents that has positive virtual value, and they all have the same value. Um, and the downward slope, the agents all have negative virtual value. OK. Um, so the designer can, uh, of course, improve revenue, because revenue equals virtual surplus. The designer can improve revenue by never selling to low value agents. Okay, so so that means given, um, you know, if if I if I consider the price I want to offer player one, given that I see player two's value in the mechanism, well, I'd never want to offer player one a lower value than player two's value, lower price than player two's value. Why? Because it's guaranteed to have negative virtual value if that sells. I'd always want to exclude those agents with, with negative virtual value by pricing it at least uh, at, at value v2, virtual surplus. And so take any mechanism the designer was running, and we can improve uh, revenue by deciding not to sell to the lower valued agent. OK, so the mechanism that we have to be considering to be optimal or to, in, in the family of sort of best responses of the designer have to be ones that do not sell to the agent with strictly lower value. Because that strictly lower value always has negative virtual value. OK, and then we say, OK, well, you want a scale invariant mechanism. That was an assumption we placed on our mechanism that never sells to the lower valued agent. Well, OK. If you're never selling to the lowest valued agent and you're scale invariant, that means essentially what you can do is offer the highest valued agent some multiplicative markup of the low valued agent. It has to be scale invariant, so it has to be a multiplicative markup. OK, of course, you could randomize over these markups. Um, and so essentially, you have to be offering some randomized markup mechanism. OK, um, and for the, the distribution that we identified, the particular one, F star, uh, in fact, the one markup mechanism, uh, th which is the second price auction, and the 2.5-ish markup mechanism are best responses. OK, so, and we'll talk a little bit more about this later. But these two mechanisms are the best response the designer can, can make over all mechanisms uh, for uh, this particular distribution, triangular distribution that we, we uh, exhibit in the construction. OK, and so because these two mechanisms are both best responses, the designer is actually happy to mix over these two mechanisms. Uh, and we'll see later why the designer wants to do that. 
cool. Um, so I want to now discuss why uh, this triangle distribution is a best response of nature to the random markup mechanism. OK, so here is going to be a sketch of the argument. So here I have, uh, imagine nature was playing some distribution that has some concave revenue curve. So here's, a, here's such a distribution with a concave revenue curve. OK, um, and so nature wants to make this ratio, uh, sorry, I, this should say increase ratio. Nature wants to increase the ratio, make the ratio bigger, um, which means sort of higher revenue of opt, lower revenue of the mechanism. Uh, the, the nature can increase the ratio by truncating the distribution at the monopoly price. Um, and uh, I'm not going to go into details of this argument, um, but I think it's pretty intuitive. The thing that makes it difficult is the fact that when you truncate at the monopoly price, you both make the optimal revenue worse, but you also make the mechanism's revenue worse. And the point is, by doing this, you're going to make the, the mechanism's revenue worse at a greater rate than you make the optimal uh, revenue worse. OK, so the first step shows you might as well have the top agents just all be a point mass. OK, now suppose that the mechanism had chosen to run the alpha markup mechanism for some factor alpha bigger than 1. OK, then I can consider the uh, what I'll call the quadrilateral distribution, where I take the revenue curve I had before, um, but make it into one that uh, is uh, piecewise linear with three pieces. OK, and in particular, uh, I want that, that sort of the kink at the lower end to be exactly a ratio of alpha from the monopoly price. So the ratio of the slope of the monopoly price to the slope uh, at this kink is exactly alpha. Okay, and notice in the alpha markup mechanism, that means if an agent's price is here, when I mark it up, I get a higher price and no one buys. Okay, when I uh, when the agent's price is here, I mark it up and I get an agent here to buy. Okay, so this is sort of carefully chosen to so that we can uh, compare things in our analysis. OK, and um, what we show is that that actually just decreases revenue. OK, and notice that the optimal revenue stays the same here by doing this, because the optimal revenue puts a, a you know, is the second price occupant of the monopoly price. And we saw the geometric, the area of that was the area of the upward sloping part. And then it was constant after the monopoly price. Um, and so the monopoly revenue hasn't ch changed here. The, sorry, the optimal revenue hasn't changed here. And so this is just making revenue decrease. OK, um, and then from the quadrilateral distribution, I'm going to go to the triangle distribution um, and show that it just decreases revenue to get to the triangle distribution. OK, and this triangle distribution now no longer depends on the alpha. So actually, for whatever alpha the designer chose, we go through this intermediate uh, quadrilateral distribution that needs to know alpha, but we end up with um, a worst case distribution, which is a triangle, which doesn't need to know the alpha. OK, so what this shows is that the nature can um, uh, have a better response uh, from using some distribution with a, uh, this revenue curve by using a, a triangle distribution with the exact same uh, monopoly quantile as the original distribution. Cool. So the next step is uh, to derive a closed form formula for the revenue of the alpha markup mechanism on the triangle distribution that, that has a peak at some quantile q hat star. OK, so given alpha for the alpha markup mechanism and given a triangle distribution, uh, which gives you an exact formula for the, for instance, the CDF and the inverse demand curve. Um, we can say we can exactly analyze what is the revenue of the alpha markup mechanism to get a closed form formula. So that closed form formula is a little bit messy. Uh, so I'm not going to give it here on the slide because we're, you're not going to get anything out of it. 
Um, instead, I want to plot some properties of it. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is consider um, the one markup mechanism and the alpha markup mechanism for some alpha. And, and here I've just plotted the alpha star, which is the is uh, the 2.5 approximate uh, markup mechanism. Okay, and I'm plotting the revenue. Uh, sorry, I'm plotting the ratio uh, that uh, to the op of opt to the mechanism's revenue as a function of the peak quantile of the triangle distribution that uh, that nature plays. Okay, so we just saw on the previous slide nature's best response to any markup mechanism is play a triangular distribution. Um, and I now want to plot the ratio that we get for two different mechanisms as a function of that uh, quantile. Okay, and so one of the things you see here is that at the quantile 0 0.093, uh, both these mechanisms, the alpha star markup mechanism and the second price auction, the one markup mechanism, uh, achieve the exact same ratio. Cool. The next thing I want to do is I want to plot the the designer's revenue for uh, the using the alpha markup mechanism for every parameter alpha. Okay. Um, and because the nature is choosing a distribution that has point masses in it, that means there could be ties. And if there could be ties, there could be a discontinuity when you choose alpha equal to one. Because if alpha equals one and the two agents are tied, then you'll get uh, the revenue. You'll essentially, you know, offer one of them the price, of, the value of the other as a price, and you'll get that revenue. Um, but if you offer any sort of epsilon markup, uh, or any one plus epsilon markup, you're going to immediately lose the revenue in that tie. Okay, so uh, you'll get a revenue as a function of alpha that looks like well, you get some amount for the second price auction, then it immediately drops, then it's going to increase and decrease. Okay, and at the particular Q hat star that we said in the construction was optimal, um, what we see is the designer is exactly indifferent between the second price auction and using a alpha markup of about 2.5. Okay, um, coming back to my first plot, what I want to note is that the, if, the, if nature is picking a peak quantile, right, Notice that if nature moves and then the designer moves later, then the designer could choose the markup that is the lower of the two. Okay, so um, the what nature can guarantee is the lower of these two curves. Okay, and of course nature wants you know to make the ratio as bad as possible, so nature is going to pick the point uh, where the both the curves are equal, which um, is the solution to this program. Cool. So um, uh, wrapping up with some uh, conclusions, uh, <laughs> you know this this question of of, uh, of optimal prior independent mechanism design has been a sort of a challenge question that's been sort of recognized as a, a, a as one where our analysis tools have not been up for the task of identifying optimal mechanisms. And uh, this paper identified a non-trivial uh, optimal prior independent mechanism in this canonical uh, environment. Uh, the analysis that I've gone through, I've, I've left out a lot of steps here because I think that uh, 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 sort of gets messy quickly and sort of the value added from going to the details, uh, 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 you lose that value quickly. Um, it's a fairly technical analysis. Uh, I think that there's there's room to uh, understand how to make these kinds of analyses uh, more uh, elegantly. And I, I look forward to uh, uh, seeing such work. Um, I think that uh, in terms of future directions that I want to single out, I think the a main uh, assumption that is unfortunate that we have to make in, in this paper is the scale invariance assumption. And I want to point out that this assumption was present also in the prior work of Alua and Vespa. Um, they also assumed scale invariance. 
uh, they in their paper have a, a, a nice argument that shows that scale invariance is uh, without loss for a restriction on regular distributions, but not for all regular distributions that they show it's without loss. Um, so they attempted to uh, relax this assumption, but didn't have a complete uh, relaxation. Uh, I think that um, there's a lot of opportunity to consider this kind of analysis question for um, other auction problems. And I'd, I'd like to see uh, the, the tools, be, uh, the refinement of these analysis tools for those problems. Um, and I think that this, uh, this approach of prior independent analysis has a lot of potential applications uh, as a model of robustness, sort of not just in mechanism design, but in other areas of economic theory. And it'd be, I think it'd be really nice to see these uh, principles applied. Cool. So I want to, um, again, uh, acknowledge my uh, amazing co-authors, uh, Northwestern students, Alec Johnson and Kai Lee. Um, and again, uh, the paper is on archive. Uh, and uh, thank you for your attention.